The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Talent for Living, starring Kirk and Diana Douglas. Danny Thomas is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. You know, sometimes you go into a house and everything's stuffy. I mean, the windows are all shut up. The place is airtight and the people are like Eskimos in an igloo. They don't seem to notice it. Of course, I'm not talking for the fresh air fiends. I'm just saying that that's how we are sometimes. Because, you know, we can also get shut up inside ourselves and keep the sunshine and laughter out of our lives. And fresh air and sunshine and laughter, it's all free. Yes, all God's gifts are free. It's like the wonderful help that comes from prayer. It's like the happiness in a family. God's gifts can be had for the taking. God's blessings come by simply asking. You want happiness in your home. That can be had for the asking, too. Pray. And don't shut up all your prayers inside yourself. Let the rest of your family into your secret. Pray together with your family, because family prayer will bring the sunshine and happiness of God's love into your home. <laughs> We'll hear from Danny Thomas again later in the program. Now, Talent for Living, tonight's family theater story starring Kirk and Diana Douglas. Well, I was the most surprised fellow in three counties when Carol Kent calmly accepted my offer of marriage. You see, we were dancing, and it was more like a joke than anything else when I suggested that she ought to be my partner for the rest of our lives. Not that I wasn't in love with Carol. Gosh, that stuck out all over me, but well, I thought I didn't have a chance. You see, she was the smartest and the prettiest and... Well, maybe you think I'm prejudiced, but there were a lot of other fellows who felt the same way I did. And to make things worse, she was the interior decoration editor on the magazine, where I was only a layout man. Well, I was still trembling a little from the shock, and I guess I must have stepped on her foot because she backed away from me and laughed softly. <laughs> well, I still can't believe it. Oh, Rick, don't be silly. Let's go back to our table. You won't change your mind. Sure? You know me better than that. I always know exactly what I want. Well, just give me a minute to get used to my luck. All the time you like, darling. Well, say that again. Darling. <sighs> Thanks. When did you first know? The minute I saw you, but you didn't. Well, you seem like a cool, untouchable... Well, I couldn't possibly reach you, but, but I did finally, in spite of myself. Was it such a struggle? Well, yes, I, I haven't anything to offer you, Carol. Oh, Rick, you'll get over this absurd humility after we've been married a while. You must. It isn't good business. I suppose not. Well, I don't mean altogether. You can be that way with me when we're alone. Really, it's quite sweet. But now let's be practical. I have a plan all worked out. You have? Oh, yes, I always plan a year ahead. Now, we'll take a double apartment in my building. It's such a good well, address. Yes, but on my salary, honey... I'll continue with my job, of course. Oh. It's, only, it's the only sensible thing to do. I have your career very much on my mind. I can help you a lot, Rick. Well, I'll bet you can, but... But what? Well, somehow I always thought of marriage in terms of... Uh, the little woman sitting at home and mending your socks? Well, maybe. Only there's more to it than that, Carol. Lots more. I wouldn't know. My parents were separated, and I lived with mother in hotels from Maine to California. Well, that wasn't much of a home, darling. Oh, it wasn't so bad. A rolling stone gathers a lot of polish. Oh, yes, but it never finds a home. <laughs> this real home stuff is highly overestimated, I think. <laughs> I let it go at that for the moment. I didn't want to argue with her. Not then, but when I got back to my room, well, for the first time, I realized that Carol looked at things differently. 
Well, I've been brought up to think that marriage was... I guess the word is sacred. What Carol had in mind was a business partnership with a little love on the side. All very smart, but not what I'd always planned on. Well, like I say, I didn't want to argue with her, but I had to face the problem and make her realize. Then about a week later, I got an idea. I thought it was a swell idea. Oh, but darling, don't you see I can't possibly get away from the magazine? Well, it'll only be for a couple of weeks. Just move your vacation up and take it when I have mine. Oh, but Rick, I'd planned on going to the Grand Canyon. There's some important people I want to meet. It'll be good for us to know them when we're married. Well, I think my family's pretty important, too. No, I didn't mean it that way, Rick. I so want to meet your mother and father, but... Well, can't we wait until after we're married? <laughs> they may not approve of me. Then you see the light and cast me aside for some hometown gal. I'm very serious about this, Carol. Are you, darling? Yes. I didn't know it meant so much to you. It does. Then, of course, we'll go and visit your parents. There, now, stop frowning. Oh, Carol, you're swell. I love you so much. Of course, darling. And I love you. <laughs> Somerville was only a few hours' drive from Chicago. Carol insisted that we take her car. It was a big six-passenger job. She used it to tote textiles and her other interior decoration stuff. I tried to laugh her out of it, saying that arriving in such a big bus would make Mom and Dad say I was marrying her for her money, but I gave in finally, and I was a little relieved when Carol let me do the driving. So we were really traveling in style when we pulled up in front of the old weather-beaten house. Well, this is it, Carol. The old family homestead. Mm, nice lines. Cottage Gothic's quite interesting. Oh, I see the lawn needs a haircut. I'll have to get after Owen. Oh, that's my kid brother. He's 12, isn't he? Uh-huh, and Alice is 15. No, 16, I guess. Now, wait a minute. I'll open the door for you. Now, cut out this independent woman business, Carol. You've got a man in your life. <laughs> Welcome home. Oh, boy, Welcome what a car. Well, it looks like you've got a family in your life, too, darling. Here they come. Hi, Hi kids. Hi, Mom. Gee, some of us. Well, it's not mine. It's Carol's. Carol, this is Owen and Alice. Hi. May I call you Carol? Oh, why not? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bowen. It's so nice of you to have us. Well, it's so nice of you to come, dear. And Ricky, will I? Oh, now, <laughs> really? Mom, don't start crying, or Carol will think we're an awfully emotional family. Well, Carol, I'm afraid we are. Oh, and take their bags into the house. And Alice, show Carol to her room, dear. We're giving you Rick's old room. Yeah, and I gotta sleep on the Davenport, and you get the attic, Rick. Well, I don't care where I sleep, just so long as I'm home. It's just lovely to have you home, dear. Well, you don't know... Oh, Mom, your hands are trembling. Aren't you feeling all right? Oh, I, I'm fine. But Dad... Well, not sick, is he? He isn't well. Oh, oh, you know, but he keeps it to himself. I'm afraid you'll notice quite a change in him, Rick. And I wish I'd known. Well, he wouldn't let me tell you, you know. He... He's got to take a vacation. I'll see that he does. Oh, if he only would. He hasn't had a day off in years. Well, how's the print shop going? Oh, that's another worry. You know, only Vic's working for him now, and he's really an added expense, because there's no business to speak of. I wonder if your father oughtn't to close up. Oh, Mom, darling, you know that would break his heart. Well, besides, what would you live on? Well, Carson's would take him on. At least I think they would. Well, even so, Dad wouldn't be happy working for someone else. Well, He's so independent. I don't think he'd last long as an employee. Oh, darn it. Why do wonderful people like you and Dad have so much worry? It isn't fair. Oh, no. No, Rick. Never say that. Why, we're a very fortunate family, having each other and a roof over our heads. And here you are. You're going to marry a beautiful girl, a fine girl, Rick. I saw that right away. Ah, oh, she has character. I'll say. <laughs> Maybe too much. I have to watch out that she doesn't wind me around her little finger. You know, Mom, I think I'm in the market for a little advice to the love lawn. Well, she'll take a mite of studying, you know, son. She isn't a girl who wears her heart on her sleeve. Uh, but there's lots of determination about her. She'll make a success of a man. Mm, I'm afraid well, so. Well, don't be. You're perhaps a little too gentle, Rick. You need a push, and she'll give it to you. <laughs> you know, Mother, you have the know-how. You sized her up at a glance. It took me months. <laughs> well, 
Haven't you ever heard of woman's intuition? <laughs> Mother Rick, look what Carol gave oh, me. Oh, What a say. nice present. And it's hand blocked, real silk. Mm. It'll be mm. simply sensational with my brown suit. Uh-huh. You know, that color's a good contrast to your green cat's eyes, oh, sis. Oh, no, you. <laughs> and she says my hair's blue-black, a rare type. Oh, Mother, she has such beautiful clothes. I just drool looking at them. And I think she's going to give me one now, of those... Now, Elvis, if you hinted to her... Why, Mother! Mm. Well, you run along out in the kitchen now and make the seven-minute frosting for the cake, dear. I always cook it too much. Okay. <laughs> I never saw such divine clothes. Oh, there's Dad coming up the walk, Rick. Why, his hair got yeah. so white. He looks Well, go a... out to meet him, son, and then you can get washed up for dinner. Well, and, Rick... Yes, Mom? Tell him he looks fine. He liked to hear that, you know. Sure, Mom, I understand. And I hope you're not too long fixing dinner. Mm -hmm. I've been looking forward to one of your meals for an awful long time. And here's Father's special bowl. Mm, What delicious-looking soup. That must be fresh dill floating on the top. Now for the first spoonful. Uh, Just a moment, Carol. Why, what is it, Rick? Well, Dad always says grace. Oh, I beg your pardon. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we have received from thy bounty. And bless the guest within our house. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Bowen. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, Carol, we've always said grace before beginning a meal. Somehow it makes everything taste better. I'm sorry I didn't think. The fact is, I can't remember being anywhere where they said it. What kind of people do you know, Shh. Carol? Shh! Oh, no. <laughs> well, I guess grace is an old-fashioned custom. Oh, I don't know, Mother. They tell me it's coming back into fashion. Why, well, I was reading just the other day in one of those fan magazines, I think it was, that some of the big movie I'm stars... I'm afraid Dad's kind of movie-struck, Carol. He's always getting his points with the information he gets out of the Hollywood column. Well, which reminds me, isn't there a new picture at the Bijou? It's already young, Dad. Good. I wonder if she's wearing the new look. <laughs> new or old, she looks good to me. <laughs> you know, I always thought religious people were serious-minded. Solemn and stuffy? Not this outfit, Carol. <laughs> Why, we're the only ones that can have a good time. Our future's all taken care of. Carol and I spent a lot of time exploring the countryside. She likes Somerville. It's an old town, a a wealthy place in the 90s, run down now, but many of the great houses remain about as they were. One afternoon, we drew up before Dad's little print shop and went in. Well, this is an honor. Uh, sit down, Carol. No, 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 wait a minute. I'll dust off this chair. Oh, I'd rather look around if you don't mind, Mr. Carol's Bowen. an editor, Dad. She knows a lot about printing. It isn't every day we can welcome an expert. <clears throat> Vic, get that press going. <clears throat> Will you excuse me a minute, please? <laughs> oh, oh, here's one of Dad's folders. Rather clever, isn't it? The way he staggers the printing on the cover. Oh, I see. It's a portrait in type. Yes, that's Mr. Wade, our butcher. Large, tender, juicy steaks. The type looks large, tender, juicy, too. Tell me, Rick, Hmm? how much did your father net out of this job? Oh, ten bucks or so, including the writing. In... He designs a little gem to win a prize at a graphic art exhibit, and he makes ten dollars at it? Now, what's this about graphic arts? Well, Carol's just discovered that you're an artist, Dad. Oh, the meat folder? Well, that's your mother's idea. Your mother, Rick? Yeah, we met at art school, you know. But she could beat me 40 ways from Sunday. You never mentioned that, Rick. No, well, I'm afraid we've always taken Mother's talents for granted, Carol. Well, that's the fate of Mother's, I guess. I've always thought she had the makings of a portrait painter if she'd gone through with it. She's a quick judge of character and can get it into a sketch. Well, have you any sketches, I mean? Oh, I guess I got a few. Let's see. This bottom drawer here. She draws them on grocery bill or anything she finds handy. Here's one of Alice. When she was a baby playing with the kitten. Perfectly charming. Just a few strokes and why they live. Here's one of you, Rick, climbing down out of the apple tree. Oh, I must have this. It's a work of art. What, isn't that an oil painting sticking out under the papers? Uh, Yeah. Oh, a portrait of you, Mr. Bowen. Younger and uh, much handsomer. (laughs) Look at that color. Just look at it. Oh, if I could draw... If I could paint like this... Yeah? What would you do, Carol? Well, I'd live for it. And nothing else. No love? No family? Nothing else. 
The great talent belongs to the world. And your mother has a great talent, Rick. Well, lucky for me, Mom didn't feel that way. Lucky for me, too, son. Well, I got Carol away from there fast before she said anything to hurt Dad's feelings. He'd always felt a little guilty about Mom. <laughs> I remember once when I was a boy, he'd had a small windfall, and he urged her to go away for a while and paint. But she'd look around the table and say we were her portraits, living portraits. Good thing she didn't go, too. Right then, Dad took sick, and that used up the money. Driving home, Carol was silent for a while, and then she burst out. Genius! All that genius lost! How did it happen? How did it happen, Rick? Well, they didn't have much money, and they were in love. Well, first thing you know, uh, I was born, and then the other kids. Her talent was sacrificed on the altar of a family. Oh, now, Carol, Mom's different from you. She's an old-fashioned mother. Don't you know an artist suffers if he can't express himself? And all of you have taken her for granted. Well, I suppose we have. I, I never thought of Mom as frustrated. She never acted that way. You never thought, period. Oh, she put on a brave face. She told herself it was her duty, her religion. Don't you know that talent is God-given to? Why haven't you ever realized that your mother sacrificed the most precious talent God could have bestowed on her? Well, I suppose we do owe her an awful lot. Rick, I want you to know where I stand. I've always believed that one's first duty is to oneself, to one's talents. Well, that's a pretty selfish attitude. Correction. It's a sensible attitude. Well, you can't sell it to me. I don't expect to. But I'll protect your interests. Well, that's very kind of you. Just good business. I expect my husband to be a success, and I'll do my part to help him. And what if he doesn't come up to expectations? Then he won't be my husband very long. Well, Carol, you... oh, Now, Rick, don't make a production out of a casual comment. You haven't anything to worry about. I've made a success out of everything I've ever undertaken. I'll bet. I love you, Rick. You're the only man I ever will love, period. And why not a comma? Because I'm the type that only loves once, like a lot of women. Oh, now let's stop arguing, darling. We've been here in Somerville nearly a week. Frankly, I... Rick, please, let's go back to Chicago. Leave? Well, before our vacation is over? Leave. And get married. Get married? Sure, we can drive back on Monday. Your folks will understand. And I'm in a terrible hurry to be Mrs. Richard Bowen. Carol, you're such Don't a... Don't say anything, darling. But yes. <laughs> Well, there wasn't anything else to say. I wanted to marry Carol more than anything else on earth, and now I was going to. Why, she'd passed up half a dozen men in Chicago. Men who shared her ideals of success and were a lot more capable of it than I am. I knew that I should be the happiest guy in the world, but somehow I didn't feel that way. Not one bit. The weekend kept slipping by my last weekend with my family. That is, well, it would all be sort of different after Carol and I were married. I didn't tell them that we were planning to leave Monday. I, I meant to, but kept putting it off. And then, on Sunday morning, as we were walking home from church, Mother motioned to Dad to go ahead with Alice and Owen while she dropped behind with me. Rick, I'm sorry Carol didn't come with us this morning. Oh, well, uh, I didn't like to insist. Well... Wouldn't she have come to please you? Oh, certainly, if I'd made a point of it. Well, she's very cooperative. Yes, yes, she's conscientious. I like that about her. I like a great deal about her. Hmm. I hear a reservation in your voice, Mom. Now, what don't you like in Carol? Oh, Rick, she's a fine oh, woman. Oh, come across, Mom. I won't hold it against you. Well, son, it's just... Uh, just uh, that her heart doesn't speak. Uh, you, you mean she's too uh, mental? No, not exactly. I admire a woman with brains, but... But? Well, there's, there's, a, there's sort of a language of the heart. And Carol hasn't learned to speak it yet. Yeah. You think she could learn? Anybody can. And Carol is smart. Yeah. Look, Mom, there's something I've got to tell you. Yes, Rick? Well, Carol and I, well, we're going to have to leave for the city tomorrow. Oh, I... I thought you had two Well, it's not the job. It's just that, well, we want to get married right away. This week. I see. 
I knew you would. I... I suppose Carol wouldn't consider getting married here in some of you? Well, I... Well, you, you see, after, her friends are in Chicago, Mom, and... Oh, gee, Mom, you, you understand, don't oh, you? Oh, of course I do, Rick. I want you to do whatever will make you happy. You and Carol. <laughs> oh, golly, Mom, you are a peach. Oh, now, flattery will get you nowhere, young man. You know, Owen ate that last piece of berry pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Rick, hmm? there's one question I'd like to ask you. Yeah. But you need an answer. Oh, what? Fire, what? hurry, hurry, it's oh, bad. What is it? Mother and I had been so busy talking that we hadn't realized how far we'd dropped behind Dad and the kids. By the time we caught up, he was lying on the ground, and his breath was coming in little sharp rattles. Dad had had a heart attack. We finally got Dad home, and Dr. Blake came. The doctor said Dad would pull through all right, but he was going to need rest, plenty of it. He'd be in bed for a year, maybe longer. I walked around the house for about an hour after that, thinking things out. Then I decided to have a talk with Carol. Carol, I'm sorry, but I'll have to stay here. For a year, anyway. But, Rick, your job with the magazine. I'll have to take a chance on getting another when I come back. I see. Where does that leave us? You love me, don't you, Carol? You still do. I thought that was settled. Keep on the point, Well, Rick. that is the point, Carol. Would you still be willing to marry me now and fight it out here with me? Give up my job? Come here? Yes. Sorry, Rick. Well, it's a lot to ask, I know. Well, that's what your mother did. She sacrificed herself and her talent. But sacrifice doesn't make me happy. You know, there are more kinds of talent than just painting. There's a talent for living, too. Look, Rick, I've got an idea. I've got a little money saved up, about 2000 Take it. Get some smart man in the shop and go on with your career. <laughs> Thanks, but... Please do. I can't. It's too much of a gamble. Then we'll wait till you come back to Chicago. You'd better think that over, Carol. I'm talking big about what I can do here. But I may be stuck for a long time. Yes. So you see... Be honest, Rick. Isn't this a way out for you? <laughs> I don't believe you're conscious of it, but now that it's come up... I don't know. Except that I love you. We see things so differently. It's not a very good basis for a marriage, is well, it? Marriage is a growing process, darling. But I won't grow your way, and you know it. Well, it's hard for me to accept that. You must, in fairness to you. Oh, I thought you believed in putting yourself first. <laughs> I'm human enough. I have a soft spot or two underneath the armor. Oh, I suggest we take a vacation from each other. I'll write you every day, of course. <laughs> We wrote, of course. Carol signed her letters with love, but that's about all the romance that was in them. I didn't have time to worry about it much. Every day was so busy, I hardly noticed the months pass. I had all I could do to round up enough business to keep the shop going. And we needed new equipment, stuff that we couldn't afford even secondhand. All told, the chance of ever getting back to Chicago seemed more and more remote. I just had to put them out of my mind. Chicago and... And Carol. Then, one night I came home late and found my mother in tears. Oh, Rick, I'm so glad. Well, what is it, Mom? Is Dad worse? No, no. Well, then what? Uh, it's... it's Carol. She's Carol. upstairs in your room. Well, well what? Well, what? You, you go up and talk to her, son. Let her tell you. Carol! Carol! Hello there. Come on up. That's simply divine, Carol. It'll take all your Sundays, Alice, for sometimes after school. Carol! Oh, I'll, I'll simply adore it. Oh, Carol, it's just all like a divine dream. Hello, Carol. I... I see you're back. Yes, Rick. I'm back, in a way. I... Alice, be a good kid and beat it. I, I... I want to talk to Carol. Okay. Wait till I tell the girls at school. What's this all about? Oh, nothing, really. It's just I was thinking about opening a shop in Somerville. Maybe Alice could help me with it. A shop? Well, what kind? Interior decorating, of course. This town certainly needs a lot of it. We should make out all right. But, Carol, I, I don't understand It's that. very simple, Rick. It's just I decided I wasn't getting anywhere at the magazine. And maybe I should go into business myself. I see. Well, it's, it's good to see you again, Carol. I, well, I'd better go down and talk to Dad. I haven't reported on today's business yet, and 
Uh, he'll be waiting. Of course. I, I won't keep you. Rick! Hmm? Wait, Rick! Yes? Oh, darling. Darling, when I got back to Chicago, I felt like I'd left home. I guess being with your family was the first real home I'd ever seen. First I thought I was just all mixed up and then I'd get over it, but I didn't. It felt worse. Then I knew what I want more than anything else in the world, Rick. A home like yours here. Yes, but, but darling, that'll take... Oh, about opening the shop, Rick. Of course, that's if you approve. Well, Carol, you know, after what you said about Mother, I, I wouldn't want to be the one to hide your talents. I found out something else, Rick. The finest talent your mother has. It isn't what she can do with her hands. It's what she does with her heart. Like you said, it's her talent for living, Rick. And that's God's greatest gift. This is Danny Thomas again, with a word of thanks to Kirk and Diane Douglas for their swell performances. You know, there are talents for living and talents for learning. Yes, and there's a talent for praying. A talent for learning the language of God, because that's what prayer is. It's the way we speak to God. The thought in our minds reaching out for help and guidance to a higher power above us. The wish in our hearts, giving God thanks for the blessings we have received. The words on our lips when we join with our loved ones for family prayer. It's a wonderful thing to have good friends. Friends we can talk to, who know our language, whom we can count on in difficulties. And the best friend in any home is God. When he's there, it means security and peace and happiness because our other friends may sometimes be able to help us, but God can always help us. Yes, God is getting popular in a lot of homes these days because so many have learned that like the best of friends, God wants to keep our families closely together and happy. They've learned that a family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, thanks again to Kirk and Anna Douglas for their wonderful performances. Thanks also to Phyllis Parker for writing tonight's play and to Max Terror for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared tonight were Myra Marsh, Earl Ross, Pat Lowry, and Tommy Bernard. Next week, our family theater star will be Miss Ethel Barrymore, narrating the inspiring story of the passion and death. Your host will be Guy Madison. This is Danny Thomas saying good night and God bless you. This series of the family theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>